we're given the function f of x equals x minus x of the one-half on the closed interval from zero to one. We want to find f of zero and f of one, which would be the function values at the endpoints of our interval. And if Rolle's theorem applies, we want to find a c such that f prime of c equals zero. Let's begin by reviewing Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem states that if our function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then if f of a equals f of b, there's at least one number c in the open interval from a to b, such that f prime of c equals zero. So graphically, if we consider our function on the closed interval from a to b, and if f of a equals f of b, as we see here, and the function is differentiable on the open interval, then there's at least one value c pictured here where f prime of c would be equal to zero, meaning the slope of the tangent line at that point would be zero. And depending on the graph, there could be more than one value of c. So going back to our example, in order to apply Rolle's theorem, we first need to verify that f of zero equals f of one. But before we do this, let's look at the graph of our function on this closed interval. Here it is. And notice on the closed interval from zero to one, f of zero equals zero, and f of one also equals zero. And therefore, by Rolle's theorem, there's at least one value in this interval where the first derivative would be equal to zero, meaning the slope of the tangent line at that point would be zero. Again, looking at this graphically, it appears that value of c we're looking for will be zero point two five or one fourth here in our function, where the slope of the tangent line would be zero, and therefore the derivative function would be equal to zero at this value. But let's go ahead and verify this. Again, we first want to verify algebraically f of zero equals f of one. So f of zero would be equal to zero minus zero raised to the one half, which is zero. And f of one would be equal to one minus one to the one half, which is one minus one or zero. So we verify that f of zero equals f of one. Our function is also differentiable on the open interval from zero to one, and therefore Rolle's theorem applies and we can find our value of c. So next we'll find our derivative function, set it equal to zero and solve for x, which will give us our value of c. So f prime of x would be equal to the derivative of x with respect to x is one minus the derivative of x to the one-half with respect to x, which would be one-half times x to the power of one-half minus one. Let's go ahead and write this as one minus one over two. Now this would be x to the negative one-half, which we'll move to the denominator and write as x to the power of positive one-half, again, in the denominator. We want to determine what value of x in this interval where the derivative function would be equal to zero. Let's begin by adding this fraction to both sides of the equation, which would give us one equals positive one over two x to the one-half. And now let's clear the fractions by multiplying both sides of the equation by two x to the one-half. So on the left side we have two x to the one-half. And on the right side, this simplifies to one, and therefore we just have one on the right side. Now we'll divide both sides by two. So we have x to the one-half equals one-half. We want x to the first, not x to the one-half. So we'll raise both sides of the equation to the reciprocal power, which would be two over one or two. Again, here we'd multiply the exponents. One-half times two is one, so we just have x to the first or x one-half squared is one-half times one-half, or one-fourth, which would be where the derivative function would be equal to zero. Now before we assume this is our value of c we're looking for, we do want to make sure that one-fourth is in the interval, and notice how it is in the open interval from zero to one. So we're looking for the value of c where f prime of c equals zero, and therefore c equals one-fourth, again because f prime of one-fourth equals zero. So going back to our graph one more time, 
our graph does verify that our work is correct. Here's where x equals zero point two five or one fourth, and the derivative function would equal zero at this x value, because we can see we have a horizontal tangent line at that point on the function. I hope you found this helpful.